everyone. Uh, so we're here today. We're talking uh, about a love song, which is Max Walker Silverman's debut feature. We've got Max here. We've got, and we've got the two leads, Dale Dickey and Wes Studi. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hello. Yeah. Howdy. Hey, Max. Howdy. <laughs> Long time no see. Yes, indeed. Hey, it's a while. When was the last time you all saw each other? Was it when you were shooting the film? Yeah. 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 20, October. We all tucked away from the world for a while and we're kind of like real live human beings to each other since we created a bubble essentially and, and could, you know, share meals and human contact and hugs. And then, of course, the bubble burst and we returned to the world and, um, the world remained rickety and we'd all of course hoped to, to finally be together at long last right now, but here we are sharing a screen instead. And that's just how it is. Life goes on. Yeah, so that was it, my first bubble. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like, um, you know, what a, what a wonderful place to, to share that bubble and to create something together. And, um, you know, just the, the scenery was so gorgeous. Um, I'm, you know, I'm wondering, can, can you all tell me a little bit about what it was like to come together and shoot a movie on location? Um, you know, particularly in a place where I, I think so much of the film is, is really about these characters relationship to the land, in addition to, of course, their, searching for love and, and dealing with loss and, you know, kind of reconciling with that. I mean, this is, this is where I, where I'm from, where I grew up in Southwest Colorado. Um, the, all the little things I've made have been within, you know, an hour of where I was born. It's uh, yeah. One of the particular and unique pleasures of, of, of doing this film is, is the ability to, sh to share my home with people and to, share a sense of, of hospitality, I hope. I'd like to believe, I'd like to take pride in it. And of course, uh, hospitality being a bubble is its own particular strange challenge. Um, one that was probably more difficult than we could have thought, but also in the end, more, more pleasant than I might've hoped. Um, and I, I, I like to believe that the, the world of a set and the world of a crew contributes to the the feel of a film that it comes comes through the celluloid somehow so to all all be out there together in a pretty place and to share meals from from a neighboring ranch um to look up at the mountain that matters every day um to drive the dirt road each morning it it seems right it seems like the way to do it um as, as much as one can create and, and share a world which is what you're trying to do in a movie so it's a pleasure, really. It's 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 as simple as that. It makes me happy. I, I hope it makes the film better. And I, I hope that those who I was able to share my my home with and the cast and the crew, you know, found some pleasure in it as well. And and Wes and Dale, uh, you know, how how about you? How was your experience with with Mac sharing his home with you in that way? It was one well, one of the most glorious experiences I've had, just sort of I think as a as a compilation of so many issues. It was my first job after COVID and it was handled so professionally. They took great care of us. Uh, it was a tiny group of us. We were all living separately and um, getting the nose swab every couple of days. But, uh, and we quarantined in Telluride, which ain't a bad place to quarantine. Um, and then we moved out into literally like a cow town. I guess it was like Norwood, Colorado out near this reservoir. and. That's where we stayed for the remainder of the filming and um, yeah, driving the dirt roads to to work every morning and having literally to wait for the cows to cross the road because the one intersection in Norwood is the cattle crossing. So um, it 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 was perfect. It, it is it is the film, the setting, the, the landscape, the land is the film, these people that inhabit it. So. I could have lived there. I loved going to set every day. Um, the colors were beautiful and we just were blessed with a, a tremendous group of a small crew, like 11. Um, everybody worked so hard and, and braved the element. There weren't any elements, just the hot, hot sun. Sometimes the cloud cover was a problem for Alfonso. 
Alfredo, as I like to call him. But yeah, it was a, it was a beautiful time. The water and uh, the air and the mountains, and particularly a tremendous hike that we took on our very last night there for some of those final scenes. Um, that might be my best rap ever. <laughs> More to be revealed. Yeah, and Wes, I mean, you know, I'm I'm hearing from from Max and and Dale. It seemed like this was such a wonderful collaborative process that was, um, you know, the the hike up to the mountain, which you know was obviously part of the story, right? Where um, Faye falls asleep on the mountain. What did you kind of learn about the the opportunities for collaborative process in this way with? such a small crew. I mean, I know that you've, you know, you've had such a long and, and storied career, but you know, what did, what did this kind of reveal to you that, that was new uh, about filmmaking? Well, you know, what was actually uh, not collaborative enough for me in terms of the scene and the, the, that you described as the climb up the mountain. I wasn't there for that. Darn it. You know, but I watched it. I watched it when uh, Max sent me that, uh, the, the screener. And thank you, Max. But in any case, that was such a great set of scenery climbing up and then the whole scenery that happened on the mountain. Uh, it, was, it was mind blowing. And the other thing about uh, what Max and, and uh, Dale already mentioned was the dirt road leading to our set, which was, you know, one place really other than the, the, the mountain scenes. But uh, uh, yeah, that, that was just the, I don't know, just sort of a setting up every day on the way to set, just sort of set up the way the day was going to go because you see this beautiful mountain up there. I forget the name of it, Max, but uh, oh, uh, no. that one, yeah. You know, there's a, a long, a good 15-minute uh, drive on once you get off the uh, asphalt and onto the dirt road and you see that mountain straight in your windshield. Uh, it's just uh, just the greatest thing. I had a lot of music that would accompany me on that drive. But in any case, that that was really wonderful. And uh, the hospitality, of course, was uh, great in terms of Max and his family and uh, uh, and the scenery and all the crawdads we got to eat. Wasn't that something? <laughs> <there? laughs> oh, yum. And amazingly enough, I learned that this lake out there is one of the few places out here around the Rocky Mountain area that uh, has uh, uh, this abundance of crawdads, which is something I grew up with, but I had, and that's, you know, further east and, and closer to the Ozark Mountains, but uh, way out here, freshwater crawdads are kind of hard to find, you know, but it was really quite the experience. And again, uh, first time bubble and first time working after COVID hit. And it was uh, it was a great release. It was a great freedom found again uh, in an intimate setting. It was a wonderful experience for me. Uh, never forget so Max, I, I wanted to ask you, and I, I think you touched on it already, um, but you know, it, it was interesting to me that um, you know this story. I think sometimes with with filmmakers um, who are younger, you know, they they might write younger characters and something a little bit closer to their firsthand experience. But here you've you have people who are later in their life than than yourself who are navigating love and I think in a different way than than it often looks when when you're younger. You know what was your personal connection to it and and what what were the ways in that you found to to really make it so personal? There's maybe not a, a particularly simple answer to that question, but uh, a year or two before shooting, I fell in love um, deeply and wholly and completely and realized, I suppose, for the first time entirely what that was and just how complicated, but also just how simple of a thing. Um, you know, every every love song suddenly made sense, that sort of thing. And I and and then of course in those around me, those whom I love were older, there's there was 
divorce and, and challenges and aging and all these aspects of life. I felt a desire out of this thing I was feeling for people to want it, e even, even if it didn't mean to have a partner, to have, have a person to share things with, but just the, the belief and the experience of love in that broader sense and the possibility of it. This, I mean, this is all just the sort of like what one thinks about over years and years. And then in that mysterious way that things happen, sort of a plot and a character eventually like lands, lands in one's head. Um, and for me, so much is that of that is comes out of being in Colorado, living in Colorado, being with these people, which is maybe why I also um, feel drawn and inspired to write about just the people who are around me out there and the people who are close to me. And that's, that, that's, that's, that's who I feel like Dale and Wes are in that mysterious power that they have. This isn't me, it's them. And, and at the end of the day, all, all, all I had to do and all I needed to do was to cast these two truly terrific actors and, and to trust them and, and for them in, in whatever way they can to, to trust me. But you can write the words and then you need you need to give the the, the people the people in the world the, the space the space to say them and i'm just so so grateful that here in westendale there's just uh, a couple a couple legends who who took this on and gave it so much love and so much affection and so much care and so much history that i that i could never have done myself and and for for westendale what um you know what a beautiful thing to hear from from a director. What was it that that attracted to you you to this project? Uh, Matt contacted me and um, and I read the script and I just it was just so pure and so simple and so beautiful and so my my kind of film I crave to do that uh, I, I wanted to be a part of it. You know and 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 also it, it was. A really large role, which I'm a, I'm a character actress and supporting actress. I'm used to popping in and out of things a lot. And so uh, this was going to be a big challenge. I've done a lot of leads in, in theater, but ne never on film. So I, I was quite terrified, but I knew then that I had to do it. And I just, I had to do it. it, it Faye, I understood Faye so much. I, I am somewhat of a loner and um, I mean, my husband and I do a lot of camping, but I love the outdoors. And when he told me that Mr. Studi, the wonderful Wes Studi was on board, I was like, I want to be there now. Let's get started now. I, I, I couldn't have been happier. They, it, it was a per perfect casting. And I, uh, but, but I tell you what, Max is, um, I was really, really blown away by by his direction and it because it was it was so simple and quiet and subtle but he had a, a great vision for it he knew my insecurities i laid him out all early and i was like listen you just give me tell me what he was always there for me and you know reminding me of 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 fay and who fay was in this moment and um it just i i couldn't have been in better hands and um, I've worked with a lot of great directors, but you know, and this was Max's film. It was his. It was his baby. But I just, I loved working with him. And he was surrounded himself with a crew. A lot of you guys, I think, had been through NYU film school together, different di disciplines. But everybody knew each other, so it was like a well-oiled machine. And it was really this lovely, lovely family. And and because we were sharing the COVID thing with the masks and having to stay apart, it. Um, it it just fed the film. And um, I think Max is a terrific talent and the whole film, I just, I was so proud to see. And I, I, again, I learned so much. I was terrified, but I was so grateful to have Wes, uh, Wes there as well. And, and Max constantly um, guiding me. I trusted him implicitly and, and, and I knew he trusted me. So we just, we just went for it. And the crawfish were pretty dang good, though. So. <laughs> I share that sentiment, Theo. Thank, yeah, thank you. It, it was an absolute pleasure working with you. And 
I, I got to say, I believe uh, that this film was a great opportunity for me to uh, play a, almost against type. You know, I mean, from where I come from, what I've been doing over the, my career has had very little to do with this intimate kind of story that Max tells. And uh, I felt honored to be asked to do this simply because it was such a, uh, I think, a story that was so close to Max's heart that yeah. at times I would say to myself, wow, would I have the courage to put out there uh, a story to the public that uh, that seems so uh, personal, so uh, so human, and so uh, something that everyone can identify with in, at some point in time in their life. You know, something that uh, seems so personal at first. I thought, wow, I'm I'm just uh, blown away by the fact that we're actually making this film about something that seems to be so dear to someone's heart that, ah, well, in any case, I, I can go on and on about that. But yeah, that, I think that's one of the reasons that I do film, that I get to be a part of someone's story. <laughs> uh, it was actually the first time uh, I ever had a screen kiss to tell the yeah. truth. <laughs> Me too. My first screen kiss of all time. I mean, in what, 30 freaking years. <laughs> Me too, Russ. You remember what right. you said? You said. Well, I couldn't tell that was the case, Dale. I thought you'd done it all. <laughs> no, 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 no. This was a. This was against type for me too. I'm usually coming out with a chainsaw or a shotgun. I mean, uh, that's that was another draw to me was that Max. I was like, wow. I, I was like, you sure you want me for this? And he, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it was just a beautiful, symbiotic, beautiful relationship. But uh, ditto everything Wes said. <laughs> well, um, so Max, that's really interesting to hear. I mean, for both of them to have their first screen kiss, and and you know, for them to be cast in roles you know, against their, the typical roles that they're, they're cast in. And yet you had a vision for, for that they would be so great in this film. I mean, how, how, you know, what, what was it, what was it about these two actors? I mean, this, this is who I wrote, I wrote the script for, um, always in my head. And you picture an actor when you're writing a script, knowing that at some point you're not going to be able to get this actor and then you're going to feel like a fool. Um, and um, amazingly, this 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 time, both both these people came and did it, and um, I wrote it for them because I just I think they're stars. You know, I'm. It, it was an idea of about type or traditional roles or any of that stuff is because they're like great and true actors and actors who, when I've seen them on screen, I feel like. I know like that's a neighbor that's someone who raised me that's someone who was uh like a care a character down on main street which is like a beautiful and, and powerful thing and and rarer than it should be absolutely but they're just very good at what they do um and so I was I was really honored that they lent they lent their skills first and foremost and then I I suppose secondly um but just a pleasure these are just great actors these are stars it's it's really an honor thank you i yeah. miss you guys um, i even miss the cows <laughs> <laughs> yeah i miss you too this is very sweet Wes, but what you said after we got back Wes and i were sharing a house and the crew had two houses and Wes and i were in a house and we got back and we were sitting on the couch and you went did we just lip lock today? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I bet Max, I bet Max researched this and found out we had never had a screen kiss before, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't know. I wondered, I felt shy to ask, but it's a, I'd never directed a screen kiss either. So I suppose <laughs> that's only fair. And it, it's, it's 
you know, you usually see a lot of young screen kisses on camera, but it was just so beautiful. And it was, it was actually very tender because the fact that it was kind of our, you know, we're two strangers, even though we've known each other when we were little, it's uh, the intimacy again in that trailer was remarkable. Max, I was reading, um, I was reading in the press notes, uh, some of the things that, that you had said about the film. You know, you say that the the West is this idealized and imagined place. And, um, you know, I think that there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of preconceived notions about what the West is on film in Westerns and, you know, all sorts of just a long cinematic history. And, and you said that, that Hollywood hasn't let uh, characters like Faye and Leto fall in love. And, um, you know, it's so, it's interesting to hear Wes and Dale and, and their, the fact that it, it, this was their first screen kiss. And, um, but I wanted to ask you just a little bit more broadly. I think there's a lot of, there was a lot of things in this movie that were, you know, just these delightful, uh, unexpected things. Like you have this little girl like leading her band of brothers as like the you know the boss of the group and you have um Faye is is the only one around who who's capable of of fixing this car you you have uh two queer women of color who are you know who were there and I think a lot of these things are you know definitely would not fit in you know western from from decades ago and um yeah can you just tell me a little bit about um, your approach to, to those elements. Yeah, so I, I have this really strange relationship to Westerns, quote unquote, because it's it's a landscape that's so deeply familiar. Like it's my, it's home, that's my backyard and all. And yet it's, it's that's a landscape that's just so often the, a background for, for violence basically and, and harshness and that that can all be true that's all that's all a part of life in in the west and in rural america and it's a place with problems there's no no doubt that's that's the truth um but i also think that it's my little mission as it were to try to shine a, a gentler light on these places basically and uh, to try to pay tribute to softer people trying their best essentially you know people who are facing challenges and facing hardship and loneliness and all these things that are very much real in life, but doing so with humility and dignity and, and a sense of humor and sort of try to paint the, the West with a somewhat more colorful brush than it's been allowed because it is in its way, a, a kinder place than people know it is in its way, a more diverse place than people know both Dale and West have been, through so many different roles, like applying a more complex and more humane face to rural America for a very, very long time. You know, I'm I'm a newcomer to that little to that little goal. Part of why it's such a pleasure to have them there. But um, yeah, that's that's what I want to do. You know, I'm I'm just I'm just drawn to the the humanity and the honesty of of people trying their best um, in in my home. Well, thank you all very much. It was really nice talking with you. Wonderful film and congratulations to you all. Thank you very much.